So actor John Cusack, who I recently learned is part of the Brotherhood of the Bernard, used his gigantic platform to draw attention to a really important issue. And that issue is corporate media's bias against anti-establishment candidates, particularly Bernie Sanders in this instance. Now, he tweeted about this and he also called for a boycott of MSNBC. Here's what he says. Be clear, MSNBC, you did this to yourself. No one made you parade neocons and neoliberal pundits to slander and smear a people's movement that you know is not radical, but a return to FDR politics. I'll just leave this here. Hashtag boycott MSNBC. Now, this is a really strong statement coming from someone who is an actor because everyone always reports on what actors say. So if an actor tweets out something that's political, you know it's going to get attention and could potentially, you know, gain some traction. So he shared a video compilation of MSNBC's bias and I think downright hatred of Bernie Sanders. And we actually talked about this same video compilation a few months back on the program. I think it was July. And this was put together by Winkle the Bernie Bro. And he took clips that Jeff Miami shares on uh, Twitter of just various random instances of, you know, them talking negatively about Bernie Sanders. And really, when you step back and look at all of these clips together, you see that there really is a hatred of Bernie Sanders by corporate pundits. So let's watch the video so that way we get the full context and understand why he thinks a boycott of MSNBC is necessary. Can I bring up the donkey in the room? Bernie? No. Bernie Sanders makes my skin crawl. The Sanders fading is a bigger story than people have given it credit for. The previous uh, set of numbers about Kamala Harris seems to suggest that Bernie Bros are actually a real thing. <laughs> He's just waving his arms around, talking about revolution and all you, where we are going, where we won't need roads. I mean, I am. One of the things I, I always hear from folks um, who aren't necessarily on the burning bus, so to speak, is, is that he's not really a Democrat. I saw Bernie Sanders trying to raise money off of it. Yeah, my, my, my timeline's going to be on fire. I thought it was horrible. And do you see any crossover, at least in those who are at his events, who kind of look and sound like Trump supporters? When you say he attracts those who feel like they're struggling, they're struggling to be heard and get their bills paid and their voices heard, that sounds like a Trump voter. I, I see him as sort of a, a not pro-woman candidate. And some oh, people say wait, that you Hillary Trump, Clinton's candidacy. Well, Bernie Sanders has done nothing between 2016 and today to expand his base, to expand his, his policies. He seemed like a socialist from the 1950s yelling at people um, in the same um, screechy voice, without smiling, without any kind of personal connection. Bernie Sanders has been talking about these same policies essentially since he's been in public service for the past 25, 30 years but he actually hasn't done anything to pass them, right? He's talked a lot about them, but we have not seen any of these policies signed into law. And what and happened for, with attention. Hillary and, and, and what's his name? Exactly. You I, would take the risk. I am you excited. Might Donald Trump Are you again. asking out of every candidate? He's also saying the same thing he said in 2016 this time around. I think that's not working. That's exactly the point I was going to make. I think he kind of got lost in the shuffle. Other people have kind of taken those issues away from him, and he looked like the angry man in the center of the stage saying, Get off my lawn. I think he comes off as, as mean. I think he's disparaging. A socialist candidate is more dangerous to this company, country as far as the strength and well being of our country than Donald Trump. I would vote for Donald Trump, a despicable <laughs> human being. No, you act, won't. I, I, let me tell you Stop something. Yourself. Le so watching that back, it's infuriating, right? I was angry the first time I saw it, but watching it again, it just reminds you that this isn't just a bias that we're talking about. Like they genuinely hate Bernie Sanders. They simply don't just, you know, uh, prefer other candidates. They hate Bernie Sanders, and they wear it on their sleeves. Like, they're not even good at hiding their disdain for him and his campaign. And it's just disgusting because MSNBC is largely viewed as the liberal or left-wing network, when in actuality, they're not. They are a corporate-friendly network who does the bidding of the establishment because the establishment is who funds them, right? They take in these advertising dollars from the health insurance industry, the defense industry, and in return, you know, they feel as if they don't want to rock the boat too much. And not to mention, a lot of these news pundits, they are multimillionaires. Like Chris Matthews, um, he gets $5 million per year. That's his salary. And does he deserve that? Like, if you look at the segments that he does in the political analysis that he, you know, is engaged in, 
The man is a buffoon. So these are people who are not just uneducated, but they're also biased. And when you put those two things together, it makes for a really dangerous combination. They are misleading people. Now, this isn't just anecdotal evidence, because we just talked about an In These Times report by Branko Marsetic, who confirms that MSNBC is, in fact, largely ignoring Bernie Sanders. And not only that, when they're not ignoring him, when they actually do choose to talk about him, well, looking at the six main shows on MSNBC, the coverage of Bernie Sanders, again, when he's not being ignored, is disproportionately negative. Now, we know that this isn't just about MSNBC, because if few weeks ago on the program, we talked about the Bernie blackout, where news outlets like CNN and MSNBC, along with the New York Times and Washington Post, they have a tendency to disingenuously report on polls in a way that downplays Bernie Sanders' chances. So if there's a poll where Bernie Sanders is in first or second place, they'll, you know, change the headline to reflect a different dynamic and say, oh, well, Pete Buttigieg just surpassed Elizabeth Warren. Like, that's an example, right? But they don't like Bernie Sanders, and they're trying to not just downplay him, but ignore him. And when they're not ignoring him, they uh, express nothing but hatred for him. So, I mean, I don't blame John Cusack for, you know, wanting to boycott MSNBC, and I'm definitely on board. I've already been boycotting MSNBC, and I only watch when I have to to prepare for the show. But the thing about MSNBC is that those who are already willing to boycott are already doing so. They're seeking out some type of independent news source, be it on YouTube or otherwise, or elsewhere. And, you know, it's just, it's not enough people who are just average consumers of news media who just kind of follow politics, not religiously, but they kind of try to pay as much attention as possible. They kind of use MSNBC as their go-to resource because they feel as if they're more reliable because they are ostensibly left-wing. So if you remove that from them, they j just kind of feel like, they have nothing left, right? They're not as informed and they feel as if that's that's like their go-to, right? So by taking away MSNBC from them, we're kind of removing what to them is probably a crutch. So I don't know that a boycott would even be effective unless people actually know that there are alternative solutions out there. So we need people to not rely so heavily on mainstream media. And if people who were liberal and left-leaning felt as if they had an alternative source, then that would really make a huge difference, right? But because MSNBC is relied upon from people who are left-leaning, they will continue to have a disproportionate amount of influence on Democratic Party primaries and general elections to come. And, you know, that is problematic because they will continue to push corporate-friendly candidates and ignore anti-establishment candidates. And if you're on the left, if you're a democratic socialist, you will always support the candidate that is hated by corporate media. So we can never, you know, let our foot off the gas. We've got to constantly apply pressure to MSNBC until they either change or enough people jump ship and really do boycott MSNBC permanently. So that way they realize that they don't have to get their news from this corporate news outlet. There are other sources that will inform them and do a better job at it than this corporate sponsored network that doesn't really care about the interests of voters and they're just trying to, you know, uphold the status quo.